Good afternoon. My name is Amir Azadeh. I'm an architect and the OAA's Vice President of Communications. I'm so excited to be your host over the next 45 minutes for our first ever digital celebration of excellence as we honor the work of Ontario architects. Normally, this award ceremony takes place every two years at the OAA conference in May. But for 2020, the pandemic meant we had to cancel our conference. Shifting this event to a digital format like this was a necessity so we can continue to practice physical distancing, but in many ways, it also has its benefits. By going online, we're becoming more accessible to OA members and helping ensure that people throughout Ontario's architectural profession can come together from across the province to celebrate their peers. This year, you don't need to be at conference to find out who takes home the People's Choice Award or to applaud your colleagues. And having this event on YouTube also meant that for the first time, we can invite the public. This is a really great opportunity for us to show people that the wide array of incredible design talent found in the province. We can show off not only innovative buildings that meet the challenges of today and the requirements of tomorrow, but also the people who are behind them. It's a chance for architects to present their work to the profession and to show the wider public the ingenuity of the projects and our community as a whole. But before we begin with the festivities, I want to acknowledge that I'm sitting here not too far from the OAA headquarters in Toronto and in the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. This city is covered by Treaty 13 with the, with the Mississaugas of the Credit and remains home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. The OAA recognizes it is important to go further than simply saying a land acknowledgement. Our decolonization working group, which includes representatives from council and indigenous architects, is examining the current regulatory landscape and examining how to encourage the evolution of the profession and practice of architecture in Ontario toward the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It's incredibly important work that falls within the OAA's mandate to regulate and govern the practice of architecture in Ontario in the service and protection of the public interest. These award winners we're about to share fit well within the OAA's vision of having architects be understood as valued contributors to society who create a safe and healthy built environment that performs at the highest levels and elevates the human spirit. This year, the OAA launched its new logo, and tonight we'll launch our new award that takes its cues from our visual identity. I'm incredibly proud of this new award design, and I'm looking forward to having our winners receive them. To help us determine just who would be getting these 2020 awards, we relied on our amazing juries made up of experts in design and architecture. First is our design excellence jury. From left to right, Richard Witt, Principal of the Toronto-based practice Quadrangle Architects Limited, Tammy Gaber, Associate Professor at Laurentian University's McEwen School of Architecture in Sudbury, Thomas Allen, an architectural journalist from Hamilton, Daryl Condon, Managing Principal at Vancouver and Victoria-based HCMA Architecture and Design, and Steve Kulakowski, co-owner of the developer Core Urban, and a past winner of the Canadian Urban Institute's Urban Leadership Award. These jurors went through 79 eligible submissions to choose first a short list of 20 finalists and then 10 winners, using criteria like creativity, context, sustainability, business, and legacy. Our second jury handled most of the other awards this year, such as Best Emerging Practice, the G. Randy Roberts Service Award, Lifetime Design Achievement, and the Order of Da Vinci. They included Heather Doubledam of Doubledam Architecture and Design, Yvonne Ip of the Grand Valley Society of Architects, Kathleen Curtin, the OA President, and Diana Osborne of Osborne Architect. And the third jury, the one that decided this year's People's Choice Award, was made up of all of you. Over social media and on the OAA's new website, we ask you to take a look at our 10 Design Excellence winners, to read their stories, and to see their photos and video vignettes, and choose your favorite. 
We've tallied the results and we will be revealing that winner shortly. First though, I'd like to introduce Kathleen Curtin, who will tell us a little more about what makes these Design Excellence Awards different from all the ones that have come before and also have her bring our very special guest. Thank you, Amir. I'm very excited to finally see the winners today. The awards program is an important event for the Ontario Association of Architects because it allows our profession to showcase excellent examples of the diversity of our work, not only to our peers and colleagues, but also to the public. And as Amir mentioned, while the circumstances leading to this event online have been challenging for us all, I'm very happy that the end result allows so many of our family and friends and interested members of the public to join us. Today, we highlight the work of Ontario architects. Whether recent projects, emerging practices, or lifelong careers, we are able to acknowledge the past, honor the present, and look to the future in which we continue to help shape a built environment that in turn shapes us all. And when we talk about the future, we are talking about many things, including one of the defining challenges of our lives, the climate crisis. This year's Design Excellent Awards are like none before. For the first time, the OAA has added the requirement that energy usage intensity metrics, or EUI, be included for most types of projects as part of the submission process. I know this was challenging for some of the membership. However, it is very important for all of our futures. If we are able to celebrate our best, we need to know which projects are aspiring to low carbon design. And we expect that our leading architects be familiar with these metrics and use them to make design decisions. Sustainable design is no longer a specialty, but rather a critical component of all building projects. That's why climate stability is one of the three priorities OAA Council set back in February, along with comprehensive education and emerging membership. Council views these three priorities through a lens focused on equity, diversity, and inclusivity. For the last few months, We've been amplifying voices about anti-racism in design on social media and on our OAA chat website. And we also have been waiving registration on webinars for the Ontario architectural profession, like next week's unconscious bias in the profession of architecture. But to ensure the continued evolution of our profession, we always need new voices to join us at the council table voices that help us to set policy direction and make critical decisions that directly affect OAA members and practices. Council strengthens the profession's capacity to self-regulate and acts in the public interest to ensure OAA members maintain standards of competency and conduct while protecting the public interest in the built environment. Next week, we open the nomination period for elections. With five council seats open for architects, one for a licensed technologist OAA, and a non-voting seat for an intern architect, members will learn more about all of these seats on Monday. And I ask you to strongly consider running. We need your skills, your passions, and your lived experiences to add to our current complement of councillors. Okay, now the awards. I'm very pleased to introduce our special guest with whom we continue to have such a strong relationship in the celebration of architecture. The Honorable Elizabeth Dowswell was appointed Ontario's 29th Lieutenant Governor following a distinguished career of serving the public interest at all levels of government and in the private sector from the United Nations Environment Program and Nuclear Waste Management Organization to the Council of Canadian Academies. As representative of Her Majesty the Queen, she facilitates community engagement with the focus on her mandate, Ontario in the world. She has long been a supporter of the importance of architecture, and I am happy she can join us to offer greetings and congratulations to the winners of the award that bears her office's name. Please, the Honorable Elizabeth Dowswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. 
Welcome. Even though we gather from afar, we still come together on lands that from time immemorial have been stewarded and shaped by Indigenous peoples. To them, I offer my deep gratitude and respect. This is a moment in time when many of us are reflecting, certainly those of you in the architecture profession. As we long for some certainty about the future, we also know that a global pandemic that touches everyone everywhere means that the future is not likely to be more of the past. On the one hand, many of us have gone a long while without stepping foot in the great public spaces that are so linked to routines of generations past and present. On the other hand, for those working from home, or even for those of us working in reconfigured offices, we've come to know familiar spaces in new ways, perhaps even pushing them to the limit. The formidable task of architects to assess space and design for all contingencies has never been more apparent. You bridge the reality and the necessity of technical challenges with the search for beauty through your art. And today is an opportunity to celebrate those who have achieved the impossible, creating sustainable and resilient buildings and spaces that will grow with us and become a part of who we are. I thank the Ontario Association of Architects for putting together this virtual program to honor such excellence. Enjoy the show. Thank you. The OE's Design Excellence Awards recognize the innovative skills of Ontario architects in creating spaces, buildings, and communities that respect and enhance the environment and enrich human activity. To be eligible, a project can be located anywhere in the world, but must be created with members of the OAA and completed after January 1st, 2015. Nominees can represent any form of built architecture, including single buildings or groups, as well as additions, interiors, conversions, restorations, and renovations. This year's winners range from a groundbreaking natural swimming pool in Edmonton to sustainably designed schools in the United States to projects that rethink common typologies like semi-detached homes and high-rise condos. We've been sharing these award winners on our website and on our YouTube channel. Here's another look at some of the most exciting recent projects by Ontario Architecture Practices and the people behind them.
Congratulations again to all those winners. Your awards are on the way. The next prize is the G. Randy Roberts Service Award, which recognizes an OA member for extraordinary service to the membership, for behind the scenes dedication and action, as well as for employing the skills and the energy for getting things done. Along with the nominee, the nominator and seconder must be someone holding status with the association, whether a practicing architect or retired, a licensed technologist OAA, an intern, or a student associate. This year's recipient is Joe Lopko, a partner at Dita Architects and former chair of the Toronto Society of Architects. In addition to renewing and restoring landmark projects in Toronto, he has served as a mentor, design juror, guest critic, speaker, and instructor at architecture schools and institutions throughout Ontario. His proposals have helped shape Toronto's contemporary policy toolkit for design excellence, helping bring forth innovative policies like the Toronto Green Development Standards and the City of Toronto Design Review Panel. Congratulations, Joe. Let's go to him now. Good evening, friends and colleagues. Getting the wonderful news about this award has caused me to reflect upon how lucky I have been to be in the company of so many inspiring people in over four decades of practice and many different forms of collaboration, whether professional, academic, or volunteer. Architecture is a team sport, as all of us know. Leadership is important, but without a great team, it may not get you very far. And I've been fortunate to have been part of some great teams over the years. And so I gratefully accept this award on behalf of all of those teams and dedicated individuals with whom I've been able to collaborate. One of the fondest memories I have as an architect was the opportunity to serve as a member of the executive of the Toronto Society of Architects, a pass the baton volunteer organization that has now been around for 130 years. That's 130 years of baton passing. My time with the TSA helped me understand how privileged we are as architects in influencing the shape and form of our communities and how effective we can be in using our talents, experience, and perspective to leave the world a better place than how we found it. That seems like a very big challenge just now, but I am so proud to see the way in which the architectural community of Ontario has been helping to lead the way, evident by the rich, richness of work on display for the awards program this evening. My deepest thanks and appreciation to those who put forward my name for this award, as well as the OEA Awards Selection Committee, and finally, to my many colleagues over the years who have helped me along every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you. We continue our celebration with the presentation of the Michael V. and Wanda Plakta Award. In 1991, Wanda established this endowment on behalf of her late husband, who was an OA member. It was her husband's wish a $3,000 cash prize be presented to an outstanding project built in the province of Ontario, specifically a smaller one. The award is now presented biennially to a project with a maximum construction value of $8 million. This year's winner is also one of our design excellence winners. Congratulations to Common Architects, Clarissa Nam and Peter McNeil for Semi Semi in Toronto. Let's take a look at their project.
The OAA's Best Emerging Practice Award goes to a firm which has been around for five years or fewer and demonstrates a clear vision, well-articulated goals, and proven effective strategies that provide a competitive advantage. They may have unique services or resources for clients or take creative approaches to nurturing skills and professional development. This year's winner is Office U, led by founding principals Nikolas Koff, Uros Nuakovic, and Sebastian Bartniki. Striving for a local environmental vernacular, they consider how a single project can promote biodiversity, water management, energy consumption, and ecological resilience. There's a long-term approach that requires research, experimentation, and a will to find new and better ways of thinking about the built landscape, both at the macro and micro levels. The jury had this to say, of his ooze positioning in the international playground and dexterity with a full spectrum of project scales is remarkable for a three-year-old practice. They embody boldness and integrity together with a well-considered and thoughtful approach. Office U is pushing the boundaries as to what is possible for emerging firms in Canada. Let's go to them now. Hi everyone. On behalf of all of us at Office U, we wanted to thank the OAA and the jury members for choosing us for this year's Best Emerging Practice Award. It's an honor to have been selected among so many talented offices. Our work and the recognition that it's received belongs not only to us, but to all of our teammates, family members, collaborators, and mentors. Their different perspectives, hard work, knowledge, and encouragement have helped build this practice. And we also want to thank our clients for putting their trust in us. Our relationships with them have given us many opportunities and experiences that we'd never otherwise have. This award comes at a time of great anxiety. Amidst the pandemic, social unrest, political instability, and cataclysmic climate change, we need to reevaluate the values and methods of our profession. We believe that the formal and aesthetic characteristics of our project are at best a small subset of broader, more fundamental human values, kindness, generosity, care, empowerment, and diversity. Our office is based on an expanded idea of sustainability, where social relationships are deeply linked with our relationships with the ecosystems that support us. To foster both social diversity and biodiversity, we must understand the complex relationships between societies and their natural contexts. It demands that we collaborate with experts in fields like ecology, forestry, energy, sociology, and public policy, and diverse community members. Listen, and when we put forth a vision, we must do so with the hope of inviting counter visions. We're a young office, but we hope that you'll keep following us as we grow. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Up next is the People's Choice Award, which is exactly what it sounds like. Members of the public are able to take a look at all the design excellence winners, pour over their pictures and read about their goals, and even see their energy use intensity metrics, and then vote for their favorite. This year, we opened the voting on Friday, September 19, and closed it at midnight on Monday. Our supercomputers have been counting the votes ever since. I'm pleased to now reveal the winner is... Harry Pontarini Architects for the Essex Center of Research at the University of Windsor.
Thank you, everyone. We were blown away by your participation and enthusiasm this year. And now for the Order of Da Vinci Award. Any Ontarian is eligible for this award, which recognizes individuals who have demonstrated exceptional leadership in the profession, education, or in the community. This year's winner is Tone Dreesen. This passage from our forthcoming OA 2020 awards book sums Tone up very well. Many architects aspire to bring design issues to a wider public, but few have done so as prolifically as Tone Dreesen. An architect, advocate, author, and activist, Dreesen has for years been leading the charge to raise awareness of architecture in civic discourse. From his vantage point in the nation's capital, Dreesen speaks to not only to his fellow professionals, but also and especially the general public. And here is a quote from Tone. One of my goals in life is to help more people understand architecture, appreciate it, and be part of the conversation. This is the role of architects in architecture, to raise those issues in a public realm. I'll now turn things over to Tone himself. Thank you very much for this award. I'd really like to thank Carl Nipfel and John Hobbs for nominating me for this tremendous honor. I had the pleasure of working with both of them in the development of the SHIFT program, along with many others and members of council. It was a real honor to receive this award, and I'd like to thank Council and the OA for the honor and that which it represents. It feels a little odd to receive such an honor that feels like I capped my career when I feel like I've got so much more still to give. I hope to continue working with members, the OA, other organizations, and other allied professions in the establishment of an architecture policy for Canada. Thank you for your support and your recognition. The Lifetime Design Achievement Award recognizes an architect's career-long commitment to the promotion and achievement of architectural design excellence. This award celebrates the outstanding contribution of architects whose body of work reflects a lasting legacy of excellence and innovation. It is my honor to announce the recipient as Blanche Lemko van Ginkel, member of the Order of Canada, the first woman to head the Faculty of Architecture in Canada, be elected a member of the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts, and be awarded a fellowship by the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. She is known for her modernist designs, her work for Expo 67, and too many other accolades to list. Joining us now to accept on her behalf is Pina Petricone, a partner in the office of Giannone Petricone Associates Architects and an associate professor at the University of Toronto's John H. Daniels Faculty of Architecture, Landscape and Design. My name is Pina Petricone. I am an architect and uh, professor of architecture here in Toronto and very proud to uh, call Blanche Van Ginkel a dear friend and mentor. Uh, accepting this award on Blanche's behalf is my great honor and uh, one which I would never have imagined would fall on me so many years ago when I first met Blanche. Um, as um, a student of architecture at the University of Toronto in the 1980s, uh, Blanche was nothing short of mythical. Uh, her incredibly powerful presence um, at the school was one uh, that I experienced and enjoyed. And I remember very well, um, um, maybe strangely, her very warm and laughing eyes uh, that often took the sting out of uh, sharp criticism. Blanche spoke quietly, uh, but when she did, everyone stopped to listen and still do now. Um, I think at the time I really uh, was completely unaware of the depth of her work, of her already seasoned career, um, and yes, of her amazing uh, achievements um, already back then. I think um, Ralph and I got to know Blanche better as uh, graduates and, and later as colleagues. And um, her amazing support of our work, of our ambitions, and, and uh, that of others like us is a great part of her legacy. I um, think if you read Blanche's biography today, um, it's uh, incredibly humbling. Um, it, it looks like uh, the work and achievements of many people, not one. 
despite uh, her exhaustive list of awards and achievements, I know that Blanche is absolutely thrilled um, and um, very honored to accept this award uh, from the Ontario Association of Architects. I know she shares it with her son, Mark, and daughter, Brenda. This award recognizes um, its recipients' career-long commitment to the promotion and achievement of architectural design excellence. In the case of Blanche, this excellence is lifelong and applied to exemplary and unparalleled work in so many areas, in uh, city building, in architectural advocacy, in design innovation, in mentorship, in championship, in education, in curation, um, and ultimately in leadership. She is a giant among us. I'm incredibly honored to accept this award on Blanche's behalf and to pass on her immense gratitude for such meaningful recognition. The Lieutenant Governor's Award for Design Excellence in Architecture is presented every two years. It goes to the project deemed by the jury to be the best design excellence award winner located in Ontario. And while our design excellence winners were notified about their award already, the team receiving this particular honor doesn't know about it. Until right now. To announce this year's winners, welcome back the Honorable Elizabeth Dowswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. Hello again. It's my great pleasure at this time to congratulate Diamond and Schmidt Architects and KWC Architects in joint venture on receiving the 2020 Lieutenant Governor's Award for Design Excellence in Architecture for their work on the Senate of Canada building in Ottawa. It seems to me that design excellence is a very broad concept, one that may in fact reflect the context in which a project is being created. In this particular era, we call the Anthropocene, we're understanding and paying greater attention to the damage humanity has wrought on this earth. And so our future very much depends upon approaching the built environment with a particular gentleness. And yet that most immodest of undertakings actually requires boldness in thought and action so that we may once again live in harmony with our surroundings. Excellence in design at this moment in time may actually be judged by the interplay between those two ideas, gentleness and boldness. This award recognizes builders and buildings that while unabashedly becoming a statement of sustainability and resilience, nonetheless manages to recede into the background, suggesting that humanity and our precious environment actually take pride of place. Today, the Senate of Canada building has become a cherished part of this country's democratic heritage. An ever contested and changing story, to be sure, much like the field of architecture itself, but one that strives to put people first. Diamond and Schmidt architects and KWC architects clearly had a vision. While the rest of us could have only dreamt of what was to be, I think it's fair to say that their triumphant contribution is exactly what was in mind when this award was created. And so as Her Majesty the Queen's representative in Ontario, and on behalf of a grateful province and nation, I offer the whole team my heartfelt congratulations. Thank you. Merci, miigwech.
my warmest congratulations to the winners on receiving this important award. And thank you, Your Honor, for being here with us. And thank you to everyone else who has joined us for our first ever digital celebration of excellence. It's been my pleasure serving you as your host, and I hope you've been able to see some exciting projects and get a chance to learn more about the people who make them happen. The Design Excellence Awards is a biennial program at DOAA, which means the next time we have a celebration like this won't be until 2022. That doesn't mean we're taking next year off, of course. Next year, we have our Aspirational Shift Challenge, which is a very different program, but one that still showcases innovative architectural thinking. It was created to highlight the distinct contribution architects bring to addressing key societal issues. We first ran it last year and were blown away by the response. The Shift 2019 Infrastructure Architecture Challenge asked OAM members and interdisciplinary teams to show how architectural thinking could offer new approaches to areas of concern. It asked for unique inventive concepts that would promote public dialogue, shift public consciousness, affect society, and drive change. Among the seven selections chosen by our shift jury were big ideas like using railway corridors to create bicycling infrastructure, harnessing wastewater for energy, rezoning residential neighborhoods, and reclaiming land for parks and cultural learning spaces. And now we're ready for shift 2021, Resiliency Architecture Challenge. You can find out more at www.shiftchallenge.ca, but the deadline for submissions is January 18. Later this month and into November and December, we'll be hosting check-ins and FAQ sessions with some of our past participants on YouTube to help guide you on your way. We're also planning other online events and public opportunities this season. Keep checking the website and make sure you're following the OAA at OAA Architects on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Thank you again for joining us today and celebrating with Ontario's architecture profession. Have a good afternoon.